Hi, people of the world watching internet videos that have to do with cars. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica ST with a now freshly painted engine bay ready to house a 2UZ V8. Yeah, right there. It's like a failed art class experiment. All these little pieces of tape everywhere. If you're new and you'd like to get caught up on the last video where I painted this engine bay, up above my head is either a link to that video or also could be a language model to learning to speak snail. <laughs> probably wondering why I didn't paint this area right here. And the answer to that, you will soon find out. 17. For those of you that are not up to speed on this project, the reason why all this is happening is because I updated all of the suspension and steering components on this RA21 Toyota Celica chassis from 1974 to that of an AE86 Toyota Corolla, which had a more modern design while still being somewhat similar geometry to this original car. This thing's gonna be really light in the front, so I don't wanna risk it. And on top of that, there's more aftermarket support for the Hashiroku. Hashiroku cross member is free. Transmission cross member, engine cross member. The transmission cross member I already sanded and prepped for epoxy. The engine cross member, however, has not had its final welds done on the motor mounts. This requires some cardboard aided design. Now that the motor mounts are permanent, they must be reinforced. Perfect. Which will require a field trip because I lack the proper equipment to make this possible. About a thousand degrees in here. A newly relocated Arizona barbecue grill outfitters. So Dave is gonna let me use this machine. I wanna try to make this myself. So I'm in this little thing, it says standard shapes, and you just enter in the geometry of the shape, which I got my little triangle right here. Pretty self-explanatory, I think I can do this. Shapes and numbers, that's all it is, shapes and numbers. This hurts my brain that it's in SAE. Yep, that looks like it. This job would have been exponentially more difficult had I not had access to a plasma table, and honestly, I don't know what I would have done if it wasn't for the barbecue grill guys. So you remember that little cardboard thing I made a couple of videos ago? Well this, along with a bunch of other templates that now have been transformed into actual physical brackets. And the cross member has now been TIG welded so it's ready to install on the car. It's a couple days later and now for a task that I don't know how to do. Problem, big meaty tires, Hit. A narrower tire stretched onto this wheel would solve the situation, but I'm not about that life. You can see there's two layers of sheet metal spot welded together here. Need to come up with a plan of attack for this. Reverse engineer, then unreverse engineer. Tool of choice, my 25 year old Dremel. This will allow me to make a more delicate cut. Well, some of you would argue that the solution should be to grab a very large sledgehammer and beat this thing into submission. I prefer the approach of trying to engineer it the way Toyota would have. Smooth brain pliers for the win. Which is essentially the least destructive method possible. Literally, this is just like butterflying a shrimp. Just Depooping it. One thing I have to pay careful attention to is how hot I get this sheet metal because there's sound deadening attached on the interior side of the car and I don't want that to melt or catch fire and make a big stinky mess. Let's see if I can spread -y spaghetti these panels. Perfect. I don't know how I'm gonna do the bottom right here though. Oh, there's a spot weld right there. The bottom corner of this is the most tricky of all because there's essentially four different pieces of sheet metal all coming together, so it's a bit of a structural point and I don't want to weaken that, even though I do intend on re-welding this area, which will probably inevitably make it stronger than it was from the factory. So this sheet metal right here is now free. I have a rough estimation of a clue of what the fuck I'm doing. and. This needs to always be the outside. I'm not using a regular spot weld drill bit here, just because it would, honestly would be kind of impossible at this little juncture. There's like four different panels that all come together. I'm yelling because I have earplugs in, and I'm mad. I wonder if I can get all that sheet metal up inside there. That's what that robot said. Ideally, I would have accomplished this before I painted the car, but it really wasn't something that I knew was going to be an issue until I had everything fully assembled. So sometimes these things happen and you just gotta work around it. Yeah. 
Aw, oh, man. The one second I took my gloves off, I got schmooed on. I can honestly only go so far with this because it's gonna start impeding into the footwell of the car and then start looking wonky. About it right there. I know it looks kind of sloppy right now, but I'm gonna have seam sealer up in there, some welts, and this will get cleaned up and then rubber undercoated. It'll look like factory. Ouch, this is heavy. As much as I hate having to do this, it would suck worse to have to redo all these welds because I didn't check the clearance. Oh wow. That's really good. Ouch, that was sharp. Yeah, that'll do. That'll absolutely do. Forty-five minutes later, side number two is done. And I have almost a finger's width at maximum lock. It's the following day. There's no point in doing any of the welding on that just yet because there are more pieces to this puzzle than meets the eye. If I were to spray black epoxy directly on this surface, well, it would probably stick. It wouldn't stick for long. Additionally, because I've been using the subframe as a jacking point to move the car around my shop, I've scratched it to hell. Donde esta pantalones? Mujeres manajosa. I have a hair appointment in two hours and I don't want to be judged by the hairstylist for looking like a bum. Floppy boy disc, angle grinder. Let's see if I can fix this. One fifty grit sun pepia. I need eighty grit. Whistle biscuit. Ah, there we go. Fire wheel. In order to have a successful paint job last, you must have both chemical and mechanical adhesion, with arguably mechanical adhesion being most important. So, solvent-based wax and grease remover. Give it a pre-wipe before I even take it into the booth. Now that I just got my hair freshly done at a salon, it's time for me to make it stink like paint and chemicals. I'm gonna do one full cup's worth of black epoxy. This is the same exact stuff I used on the car. Uh, this is not sponsored, so I'm not saying it makes it, but you can read. I don't know why I grabbed a short stir stick. That's kind of dumb. Guys, that was so thick. The original transmission crossmember on this car was done in a satin black, so I wanted to keep things as close to original as possible. This is a one to one, so 13 ounces and 13 ounces. That's gonna take about 30 minutes for it to activate. I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to powder coat or to paint these pieces. Waterboard, wax and grease remover. Ultimately, I chose to go with the epoxy paint because I feel it holds up better on suspension and undercar pieces when it gets impacted by rocks as powder coating likes to spread corrosion up underneath it once it is initially broken through with a rock or something impacting it. And because this is a direct to metal application, I decided to go with three medium wet coats on here with my first coat being a little bit lighter than the other two. As a first coat, these pieces I'm painting are fairly critical. I literally can't install anything without them. So for my second coat, I kicked the PSI down to 16 PSI on the gun by accident. And I was mid spray and I was like, oh, this is laying out amazing. The consistency of the orange peel was just like robot like perfect. And I was like, what the hell is different? And I looked at the pressure on the gun and I saw it was down to 16. Normally you're supposed to spray that with a mini gun around 20 amazing i could not believe how easy it was to control especially getting to little like pockets and stuff where typically it would want to run when you're spraying up in those little crevices now it was perfect so that was awesome let's see let's see let's see it's been about 15 20 minutes as much as i want to just grab this stuff and start throwing stuff together on the car it needs to sit and harden up well that's not too too bad considering this is just a piece of steel that i scuffed with 80 grit the uh, same thing with the engine cross member. That turned out pretty good. I feel like I got a little bit dry by the hook. 
I don't know if I'm being picky or not. I'm so happy how these little brackets turned out. I mean, that looks like it came from a factory. I tried to get up inside these little pocketed areas as best as possible. It was really hard to spray inside the little grooves, but luckily it's not runs or anything. The little brackets turned out good. It's the following day and I have a bit of a conundrum that I'm trying to decide what to do about these headlight buckets before I install them. It's really hard to tell because these are super dirty and kind of corroded, but originally I think this was finished in black zinc. I could just repaint these black, but because there's so much fine adjustment to them, you don't want them getting gunked up with paint. Challenge with these being zinc though, is there's these little plastic pieces in there that I can't let chemicals get to because they'll destroy them. I'm strategically recording this so I don't forget how it goes together. Spring into the outer hole. I can't believe it still has these. This is the original Kyoto made in Japan high beam. It has little labels paint stamped onto them from the factory and I'll lose those if I re-zinc them. I'm gonna use a very light citrus degreaser and see what this does. You know, this might actually be that cadmium green coating and not black zinc, which is something that Toyota also used very common on their vehicles. All right, so this is definitely green cadmium coating. The only reason why I repainted that car is because someone had repainted it before me and done a terrible job. So I'm only restoring stuff that was done shittily and not factory. These trim rings, I don't know about. I don't know if I can get these clean. I'll try a yellow scotch pad. These are fairly non-invasive. A little bit of robot cotton candy. Well, I could have just bought a cheap made in elsewhere replacement one for a couple dollars. It was well worth spending the 15 minutes to make the genuine original Toyota one look brand new. Oh man, that's not, that's not okay. That's too much to try to just like touch up spot fix. I'll lose the little logo and yeah I guess I could try to repaint it on there but that's just janky. It's too... I'll let you guys vote on it down below but I think I should probably just have all of the things replated. It is at least stamped in the sheet metal at the top right here made in Japan Toyota. I got an idea it's worth a shot. This is fallout remover designed for cleaning brake rotors on cars. I don't know what's gonna do to this. I probably shouldn't be breathing it. That's a giant bubble of chemical. You know, it's a real deciding factor is whether or not I can get these little plastic tabardoodles out without breaking them. Yep, there's one. Oh, I heard that one crack. I don't know, it's still functional. All right. Come on, no whammies. Got it. Got them all out, none broke. Big money, no whammies. Big money, no whammies. Yeah. Extraction successful. I guess it's settled then. I have them fully disassembled. This one was real bad. The hardware all separated. This should be gold zinc. Without a doubt, the little nut plates are supposed to be black zinc. None of the plastics broke. I had this out here in the sun all day. All right, this paint's good and hard now. Okay. At the start of this video, this was nothing but a piece of cardboard. Now, it's an actual part. Critical one at that, because I need to make these lines and I can't do it without this. Haha. <laughs> yep, that'll go just like that. I can't really finalize this until I have the rubber isolators and also my heat shield fabbed up. This is one of those videos that's difficult to film because it's not visually showing like a lot got accomplished, but everything I did is going to allow me to fully assemble the rest of the car up front. This part's not gonna be fun. Well, these are dirty. I can't put those in like that. Use a little bit of degreaser on these. Now I got the spacer in there. This should make more sense. Eyes up. Okay, I think that's how it goes. Shit! Fucking hurry, you fucking idiot! Oh my god, this is gonna happen. Holy shit, that sucked! Put it back in the hole, I go. I come out of the hole, I go back in the hole. I come out of the hole, I go back in the hole. I add a little bit of quickie on there. Probably should have tightened the hardware before doing that. Alright, now that I finished smooth braining. It's okay to have the occasional smooth brain moment in life as long as you realize that you're having a smooth brain moment. There's those of us that don't realize it that become NPCs. Reassembly 
is so satisfying. I love this part. Not only are my parts gonna slide in easily, but they're also gonna smell like a uh, lime slush puppy. Shout out in the comments below if you know what a slush puppy is. Had I been born an intelligent human being, I would have used my hydraulic press to do that. Oh, you stupid. Don't do dumb things like Sarah does. Be smart. That's amazing! I didn't even break my nail and I hit it full on with a hammer. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like I get quite a bit dumber the longer I go without food. Perfect. I still have to figure out the conundrum of my front anti-sway bar. I literally don't know how that's gonna happen because the oil pan completely blocks it. Hopefully a Hashiroku one will work. This is how you know we evolved from monkeys. Or maybe just I did. I don't know. It worked! Darwinism for the win. Oh, I changed the tolerance because I added mills of paint. Now it fits perfect. Now I can do an accurate test. Without having the front fenders on, I really can't say where this is going to be, but oh, I, that's already going to max out the steering right there. I mean, the top of the tire is way in. I'm probably like negative three degrees of camber right there. So obviously that's, I'm going to bring the bottom in and the top is actually probably where it should be. What do I do with my other bolt? It was at this point in time, hunger started taking over and I realized I've accomplished it was right here. quite a bit of stuff on the front of this car so far in this video. That was the last major fabricatory challenge I feel I had to do. Why is that so hard to say? Fabricatory. I have heater core piping, a couple little tweaks to the wiring harness to make it better, finish the back side of this from inside the car once I can roll it around on the floor, drive shaft and exhaust left and front anti-sway bar. Those are the conundrums I gotta solve before this is a drivable vehicle. So the next video should be finishing up stuff in the engine bay so I can reinstall the engine. And then after that, Probably the exhaust, which I have some special sauce up my sleeve. That didn't sound, I'm getting hungry, I think, so words start are starting to make food sense come into my brain. <laughs> I can't even talk right now, I'm tired. I'll see you soon with another video, bye.